Char Ferrara is the author of a Chinese cookbook, and she writes the blog Walk and Skillet. She says the growth of restaurants serving authentic Chinese cuisine is being fueled by the increasing numbers of Chinese moving overseas. Yeah, and I, I think that the main reason for that is due to the increase of the Chinese population that are living overseas, and more and more Chinese restaurants, authentic Chinese restaurants, are opening up um, to cater to their taste. And it's interesting, you know, my colleagues, uh, I'll go to a Chinese restaurant, I don't know the difference. I mean, I'll say, well, this is fantastic, and they'll say, no, this is, this dish is not good. <laughs> um, they will seek out something that's authentic, and I think you get, as you said, there's more of an explosion of, of people moving abroad to different communities. It's really creating a demand, isn't it? Yes, I think so. And I think that each country already has their own version of Chinese cuisine, but it's different enough where the Chinese people still crave those true authentic flavors that they're so used to. So where is it most popular, would you say? Um, I think that there are already some countries with a really large Chinese population, whether it be Chinese born or uh, of Chinese descent. Um, countries in Southeast Asia in particular, like Malaysia, Indonesia, um, Singapore, for instance, is well, we have an abundance of authentic Chinese cuisine here, but as as we know, there's we've also seen an explosion in Western countries as well. And, and Char, what's really interesting is if you go to China. I mean, I've been to Beijing. You get a certain kind of cuisine. You go to Hangzhou. It's a different kind of cuisine. And I think most people who who don't know that about China don't recognize that there are different cuisines for different regions. Can you kind of run that run through that for us? Yeah, so there are four, um, they call it the great uh, regional cuisines, and I think it's just a very general categorization, uh, categorization based on the geographical location, so you have the north, south, east, and west. But of course, I think that there's also a lot of overlap, uh, so this is not exact, but what separates those uh, different cuisines is the flavors, the cooking techniques, and also the ingredients that are being used. So, for instance, in the north, you'll find a lot of um, really hearty and heavy uh, dishes because it tends to get really cold there during the winter, and a lot of uh, wheat products, for like noodles and breads. Whereas in um, the east, you'll have a lot of seafood and pork, and you'll find the dishes there are a little bit on the sweeter side. And of course, in the West, you have Sichuan cuisine, which is famously known for its tongue-numbing spiciness, uh, thanks to the Sichuan peppercorn. So really, really heavy in flavor. And in the South, that's where you'll find Cantonese cuisine, which um, uh, dim sum is really a, a popular example of that. You'll notice that those flavors tend to be a lot more light to highlight the natural uh, flavors of the foods. So give me your sense about the future. Is the sky the limit? I mean, uh, are we going to see more and more of this? Absolutely. I think over the past few years, we've already seen a really huge shift um, on the internet with regards to food blogs, social media, and also YouTube. Um, there's a huge explosion of uh, food blogs in general. So of course, you'll also find some food blogs on authentic Chinese cuisine and also YouTube videos that have really detailed step-by-step -step instructions as to how to prepare those meals. And you couple that with how easy it is nowadays to find authentic Chinese ingredients in supermarkets all around the world, or Asian supermarkets all around the world, and not to mention being able to buy those ingredients from yeah, e-commerce sites like Amazon. Char Ferraro there. Our look at what's trending on Chinese social media. That's next on China 24.